Yeah, to being at the very top of their group, obviously everybody's ideal goal here for the championship, but like you were saying, top 16 overall is going to be who we're watching there in the very, very finals. We can see the zone already coming out, and yet again, we've had a really, really solid variety so far when it comes to our zones, because now we're going northwest. Yeah, way up towards the northwest there. We can already see the second circle. First one's going to be popping up in just a moment as our teams start to loot things up on the initial pickups here and then begin making the rounds, especially for our teams on the south side of the map, specifically the southeast. Once again, flavor of the month going to get a little bit unlucky in that respect as they have to go for a near full map cross in order to make it over there. That's assuming, of course, they're still landing on that bottom right part of the map towards Lava City, which they've done in every other game so far, I believe. Yeah, this is definitely going to be playing in the favor of a lot of those squads that you guys can all obviously see up there on the northwest of your map. But checking back in with Flavor of the Month. I mean, honestly, I don't think that the fact that they went out first in the last game is right now affecting them all too badly. I mean, they're still in a solid position and they're only yeah. so many points behind new esports. So definitely less than ideal. But like I was saying earlier in the day, they had set themselves up so well that anticipating obviously one or two bad games here because nobody can be perfect all the time that they got one of those game bad games out of the way and have still maintained a really solid position overall. Not to mention the fact that this large portion of the map they're going to have to cover over the next 10 minutes or so is not an immediate death knell for them either here. Mm -hmm. This is the third time in a row, I think, that they've had to make a pretty major cross such as this. And the first time we saw them doing it as well, uh, they were able to make that cross pretty sufficiently and still end up placing towards the top five. We're back over here with Reply Totem Esports, and I believe we've got some insight from Sharp. Let's take a listen. I think many teams is just formed, like uh, Impulse, Taskmaster, and Sunset Team are gonna be strong teams, even though they're not really known in the scene for being like a, a long-term team. If I have to choose a team to win, I would say probably Gambit because they they demonstrated being like a really good team lately. If I have to pick a best player in competitive Apex I know, I would say Abdeki for the European scene at least, because he's a really good uh, mechanical player and uh, also a smart one. A smart one. Here's some nice words there from Reply Totem, specifically Sharp giving uh, obviously some nice respect over to the Gambit rosters. They've been performing admirably over the past few months. Like we said, a little bit of a bumpy road so far here in our first of three days of group play, but not terrible either. Still sitting in the top 10 for this cross group matchup. And of course, plenty of opportunities to improve that as the group stage continues. Yeah, I mean, we don't know what's going to happen as those matchups change, right? Because we obviously do have four groups, and this is only two of them. So as the the groups are changed and matched up against each other, each other differently, that could entirely mix up the outcomes for a lot of these squads. Already we're checking in with new esports, and they are ammo, trying to keep their sights on a squad acro ammo, across the way as they are one of our teams already over in Lava Fisher. This is going to be one, the, if not the building area that you'd like to be in potentially with how this zone will close down upon itself so you can see that they are getting their position nice and early and trying to secure that spot we we're talking a little bit earlier quite a bit in fact about gambit i'll switch over to them now they're in the midst of a rotation taking quite a bit of heat here too artico nearly getting melted that's the unfortunate part of that gibby you are obviously going to be the largest hitbox on your team so that usually means you're the first target Appears as we switch over to them, they're also engaged in this very fight versus the Gambit members. One of them going down, another one about to get pinched as well. Orienje actually nearly getting traded in the process, but they're able to hold on there. And I believe they're going to wipe them out without too much of an issue. That's a big loss for Gambit. The second game oh. today now, they're going to go down in 20th place. That is definitely not how Gambit wanted to finish out the first day here. They're going to be going into our day two here in just a couple days probably with a lot of uh, aggression, a lot of delayed aggression here. Maybe might even see some changes to their comp or trying to see if there's anything they need to work on. They've got the time to do so, but that's going to be big for your peers. And then Totem now also trying to see if they can maybe clean up on some of the potential damage that Gambit had dealt out. Fortunately, they aren't able to do so. Your peers does back off and Totem decides they're going to go back to a little bit safer area. But that's a very, very early early loss for Gambit to go out. I mean, we've 
They, we've talked about how there is the potential for some of the teams to get caught out on these rotations when they do have to make a little bit of a trek across the map. And with this zone, there are some squads that are going to be stuck doing that, but I did not anticipate it to be Gambit yet again. They've just had a very unlucky day. Honestly, it's it's been a really big theme today in general. Some of the highlight teams getting knocked out just in the middle of these fields across the map because uh, obviously it hasn't been much of an issue until later on these final mm. three games that we've played. But when we finally got the more drastic circles forcing those rotations, it's been a pretty big problem here as we're losing a lot of teams here that you would normally expect to easily make it into the final couple of circles going down on the very first one before it even closes, in fact, there. So not the best day for, for Gamut, but as you were mentioning, uh, one of the great things about this format is the teams will get actually actually days off in between the games. Way. So that's plenty of time to look at what exactly was going wrong with their specific play. And of course, adjust whatever they feel is necessary going into the second day of groups as well. Uh, 10 different opponents that they'll have to go up against as that'll be a different group matchup on the next day too. Well, looks like, looking like Na'Vi is also taking some damage here, rotating through the city for themselves. 303 Esports, are they the team that's actually on the hunt for Na'Vi right now? I like don't it. even. They look pretty solidly looted as well. Two golds and a purple already on 303. So if they want to go for these KP, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they continue this chase to try to secure them. But they decide to back off and rotate a little bit wider around. Navi is pretty deep into the city at this point. So a smart decision. Played a little bit more conservatively because they do also want to make sure that they are getting a spot in the end zone. They aren't quite there yet. Yeah, we're getting kind of low on the, uh, the buff as well coming out from the Bloodhound Ultimate. So losing the consistent scans they would have. There's a possibility they end up walking right past that squad and trapping themselves deeper in the city, not to mention all of the unknown factors playing into that city. So not really wanting to go for the push into Fragment there. Too much of a risk for them at this point in time. So they sit back, play it more cautiously, as I believe the rest of our teams are doing here as well. Flavor of the Month in the midst of their own rotation. They have made it to the first zone. Obviously a lot more movement from this point forward to go, but they can at least breathe a sigh of relief. For now, no longer going to be under any immediate threat as they've made it across the map this time around. Not going to get cut off. Said that fate goes to Gambit. Unfortunately, they're our first team to get knocked out. 303 establishing the position here on our multi tiered building. Going to have a lot of a view onto the rest of Fragment here. And in fact, we're going to go ahead and do a listen in on them to see how exactly they're going to try to handle this situation. What are we doing from? I should have dropped your bat as well. They're flying. They found somebody flying. Is it Demo? Yeah, there's some, there's some. Wait, they just took Beacon and went there? They don't took it. The oh, they didn't take it. Okay, let's let's go up here now. I don't want cell taking light. One back here. They're fighting. Where's the uh, fighting? I, right cannot carry, I cannot hear. I, I don't care. I don't see anyone right now. Let's go up here, actually. Let's go this way. I took the bat, I took the bat. They might Maybe we can get something in Kanda. I think they are here. I don't know about that. Might be something good I should scan this. Not here, scan oh. the house. Okay. Ping it. Steps here, 50 seconds ago, this way. Let's go this way. Run is taking. You can hear some of the micromanagement of the situation going on there from 303, of course. Trying to isolate out a squad that they might have been able to get aggressive against, but just no real opportunities being presented, especially with Navi exiting the area through the use of their Valkyrie's ultimate. Moving on. Building. Oh, oh Go ahead. <laughs> We've got Team Legion under quite a bit of pressure here. Ox specifically low, already losing their first and now second players as well. So Ox gonna get pushed to the end of this team's margin very quickly as they're gonna find themselves knocked out. It's Legion going down. New Esports claims the KPs as a result of that fight, also moving them up a level to take the tier two. Problem is, we've got immediate refrag attempts coming in now from another squad. Some good damage coming out from Tyler though on that bolt, absolutely shredding one of these aggressors and making them think twice about trying to put the pressure on to New, giving them the moment they need to rebuff themselves here. 
We see the Ult Accelerant being popped there just in case they need yet another portal. And this, 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 these are all the teams that initially went over to Lava Fisher, thinking that that was where the end zone was going to be. But uh, that's what I was kind of staring at when you were when you were talking about that. Blue, did you see how hard the zone shifted a little bit farther northeast from where I think a lot of these squads that we're now looking at in Lava Fisher initially thought it was going to go? They're going to have to be making some decisions here on what they want to do. Are they going to finish these engagements out? Are they going to take them? Are they going to try to rotate away and get a better spot in? side of the zone, which is going to be a little bit tough to do, considering how many other teams probably benefited on their rotations with the way that it pulls as they were making their way over to the west side. I mean, this is this is going to be a little bit of a rough spot. Especially considering there is not a lot of ways to retreat from the current positions, especially here inside the Fisher itself. You obviously don't want to jump down below into the lava, not only slowing you down, but or is doing constant damage to you as you try to retreat. So it's going to be a very, very touchy situation for all the teams in this zone right now. We can see, of course, one of the crypto drones working their way out here, trying to figure out what exactly is going to be around the corner for new esports as they'll eventually have to commit themselves to a rotation in that direction. Not going to be forced into it anytime soon. It's only good two to three minutes as this current circle will favor their position. But obviously, does not want to be the last team out of here either. They know just how many squads are sitting around them, and if they're the last one to rotate in, it's going to be very hard to try to fight for any positioning, let alone actually make it to that new destination. That's part of the reason why they're going to stick around here for a little bit to see if they can wipe anyone out on their own retreat before they themselves have to move to their next spot. And with how opportunistic a lot of our teams have been, I don't even know that it's, that there's necessarily a right or wrong time to really make that rotation because no matter when you think you're safe, there's always the possibility of one other squad being in the way and taking you out on that rotation as we saw happening to Gambit because there was, I, I can guarantee you, they didn't expect somebody to necessarily be there and, and have to have gone down so early. Some solid shots coming out of Navi with the wingman trying to deal some damage as well as some Valkyrie doing some damage as well. And we've seen actually how successful Valkyrie was in, in the very last game. I mean, being able to be super useful for those teams over on Overlook. So it'll be interesting to see what she can do for the teams that she's on this time around. Spike still getting some good shots off player for LCDF. On that Wigman upgrading the Evo Shield over towards purple quality now. As we're going to move into this next few moments of action, we can see it's like still holding the line as well. He's got a cutoff for one of these teams' rotations directly in front of him. So that squad is going to have to be cognizant. And more importantly, probably just going to have to stick in that position until the circle either forces LCDF out of their current position or, of course, until they're forced into a fight where they won't exactly have a choice of that matter. For the time being, though, to be able to maintain this spot, we'll switch over towards another team here. Your peers who are in a bit of a difficult situation taking shots from across the field over in train yard while also dealing with another squad directly on top of them here on the comm tower you see it's not going to be the easiest fight in the world for this team to take they've already been involved in a lot of similar situations so shouldn't be lacking in any respect experience on how to handle this scenario because they've been caught in this part of the map more than once already pkmk though can't seem to find the lineup this player up on top of the comm tower just proving a little bit too tricky to handle but thankfully Portal now out, a retreat option available for it appears, and they're going to be able to at least make it to a different part of the map. Doesn't necessarily seem to be a safer one, though, as Rubik nearly immediately dropped upon exiting the portal. Seems like they're going to be okay, though, making it behind these pillboxes to be able to try and stay alive here for a little bit longer. Ultimately, just to suffer that much more damage to a new flank, though, they're direct behind. Now, being taken advantage of against them here. They have to find a new corner to hide in. It seems to be working for now, but for how long is the question? Every other position they've taken here has been breached within a few seconds, and this one probably going to suffer the same fate in just a moment. Contact with hostile. Yeah, they're definitely in a little bit of a pinch right now. I mean, we obviously saw them use their portal to escape. The first team they ran into, they had to wrap around. Gibby Bubble has already come down twice for them. Here we go. Sides, they, you know what? They decided to use Valkyrie ult and see if they can rotate away because they are in a really, really rough pinch. They're going to do their best to avoid taking any any damage while they are in the air, but this is their best play. Not only will they be able to escape, but they'll get all that passive information as well, being able to see where some of those players are as they land. So hopefully being able to keep themselves safe for now and get out of a really tight spot. 
did just see new able to wipe out another squad so we'll switch over to them in the midst of looting things up not even out of the hot seat just as of yet here either as there is at least one more team taking some shots against them trying to make an impact this is new who we saw hold this position a few moments ago and apparently has made the decision to continue holding it well into this circle closure as you can see they are the winners of that exchange ultimately everybody else that was here a few minutes ago is now either dead or has fallen back to a different spot but the problem presents itself here now as new esports do need to rotate around into a different part of the map it's not necessarily going to be an easy rotation that circle is cutting off directly against the canyon wall to their right at the moment so they have to try and move forward to the next break in said canyon in order to be fully secure here so we're gonna see they're not gonna waste any time with it either they spot a squad mid rotate falling back from another fight they immediately pop the emp problem is though tyler doesn't get the best engagement he immediately loses full shields as soon as he jumps out of his portal rest of the team close behind though ready to dive into this but they have to be careful of the third party that was jumping onto their target a couple seconds ago they don't want to become third party themselves here so you need to make sure they don't get too aggressive on the inside of this fight era finding a lineup against the one player inside of the building but they're apparently engaged against someone else down below as well so that will call for the fallback on kashara to regroup with the rest of new Ooh, this is a, a, a decision that New's going to have to make here real soon. Which team they want to push. They should probably move forward if they can as a trio and at least wipe out the one that's on the same height level as them because this building is about to become prime where the zone is about to be. And it's going to be pushing in here in just a few seconds. And since we are on the short end of the zone, they don't have a lot of time to play with once that does begin. They are really nicely looted up though as a trio so if they can kind of give themselves a moment here to figure out exactly how they want to handle this push they could end up taking a really solid spot more than anything looks like they're trying to be cautious of the squad below them right now as it's atk sitting directly in front of them blocking the further rotation past the building that currently blocks their path obviously atk to try to resist that to the best of their own capabilities but new messing around on the outside not going to be the easiest thing to jump on it'll have to be a moment of opportunity engagement for atk if they want to try to jump on new here but there is another squad in the mix here firing some shots up onto new new doesn't seem too interested in taking that fight though they're actually trying to lock atk to the inside of this building and stop them from being able to accomplish all that much here so that's gonna be the caustic mines going down in order to lock those players in and at a minimum make their engagement a little bit less potent here as they'll have to jump out directly into the gas itself. Yeah, for the meantime, a quick re-engagement coming out from them and their own Valkyrie. They get messed up a little bit as they jump on top of this out-of-bounds structure just to get a quick overview of what exactly is going on down below so they can try to avoid jumping directly into another team more than anything else. They'll find safety, it seems, further on the inside of this POI and be able to hide out there at least until the next circle. We're seeing just how useful Valkyrie's hit is for these squads, especially when they're trying to gain some height advantage on their enemies. But as I say that, New Esports decides to make the push into the building onto ATK. It instantly find the first player and the second. Make me made that push look so clean and easy. And this is the hold that they needed. Slowly built a cage surrounding them there with those caustic mines. Made the engagement so easy, but the follow-up not going to be as easy here. Slowly faltering due to the third party working its way in here. Cleave and Ranch getting two of those kills. Post kill, the last one standing for new esports. He downs a player in response. That's not the only one going down, however. Still has to fend off a few more, but might be able to survive this third party engagement. Pushing new esports further into the matchup. More than anything, trying to greet out the KPs right now, just in case that third member of the squad is able to sneak up on a post kill and finish things off. But he's going to make sure he takes at least two of his squad mates with him before that opportunity is taken. Post kill. Still not feeling secure. Here comes the re-engagement now from Ranches, but post-kill ready for it. Has this player Ooh. down to just health and wipes up the shop as well. Beautiful clutch from post-kill, and it keeps new esports in the map. But for how long, though, as we do have both the circle closing in, there was a ping coming out as well. I'm unsure if that was indicating another squad. It was. We have another player hiding out just behind the fence here that post-kill has to be worried about. As far as I can tell, it might be a solo, though. So this might be a pretty minor threat overall to the new roster. As we can see, Raccoon slowly getting pushed out of her own position into the open where Kashera is going to try to finish things off. I think Tycoon might have dodged that fate, at least temporarily, however, as he's on the run. That was an insane play from New Esports, and the fact that they're able to get back to a three-man roster after that, that was so clutch. But now we're on board with Kungarna, another team that everyone has been super hyped to talk about for this event. 
but they are in the middle of a fight that's not going their way already. JMW down, Graceful, no shields whatsoever. Mady's in an okay position right now as he's trying to clean up on some of the KP and keep the rest of the teams off his squad as Graceful is able to get a bat off for his shields. Are they going to be able to get JMW up though and get a full reset going? I'm not sure if that's going to work out for them. Immediately going to have to re-battery up here. Not only that, but the circle's quickly closing in on their current position as well. New Esports coming in for more carnage here as they're able to take down some of the members of the new roster, Kungarna. Of course, you guys at home will know them as Nessie, now represented by a new squad. This time, though, not going to be able to take it that much further past the top 10 as we do see No Esports coming in to clean them up as well as continue adding to the numerous KPs that New Esports will have at this point. That's at least like six to nine they have had, I'm pretty sure, yeah. just off of a mental talent. I mean, look at this, right? It's 11 sitting on just post kill. So this is going to be a massive game for you regardless of the ultimate outcome. I mean, especially right now, because they, they know where a lot of these squads in front of them are. They're able to uh, do some damage into the area in front of them. But did, did Kishara just go? God, somebody yeah, he, takes out Kishara. Kishara seemed to have extended pretty far to try to get better view as in terms of what was going on. But unfortunately, that left him all up on his lonesome. No Gibby oh, shield available to support, as well as not a lot of coverage. Just getting a quick overview of that area as well. So Kishara suffers the fate of overextension there and new esports will lose a lot of their aggressive power uh, not to mention the fact as well that they've got low ground for this final fight the good news is though is that a lot of teams are going to have to jump down pretty much directly next to them so there might still be hope for recovery assuming those other two players are still in the fight here can't see them on the overview but I'm pretty sure they're still out there hiding somewhere reply totem 303 and a whole bunch of other squads still in this fight as well now that we've entered the top six that's going to be rubik going down from your peers rest of the squad on your peers seems to fall now as they get six place on the inside of this matchup and new esports now with only two players standing here trying to do what they can and push their placement as far as possible at a deficit they they do have some decent angles on the rest of the squads that are around them you can see that there is a solo on 303 also over the corner trying to do their best to rat totem is taking a lot of damage right now from lcdf i believe that's who they were and, and they end up go oh my okay okay blue there's a lot happening here all right, top three action here, but Totem probably going to go down in third place unless they can turn it around themselves. In fact, LCDF losing at least one of their members. They should be two, but New Esports looking to clutch this out with only two players standing. Now only one standing, but no, it can't be done. It's flavor of the month. Excuse what? me, not LCDF. Instead, where were they? We didn't see what? anything from them. 